don't think I'm ever just an actor for hire, just me. That's just not who I am. Like I bring everything to whatever I do. And there are people that are more receptive to everything and people that are less receptive to everything. I think that as I get older, people are more receptive to everything I have to bring. Well, we have a lot to unpack here. <laughs> There's so much going on in this film. I do have to tell you, when I was doing research, uh, preparing questions, I, I read all sorts of interviews with Alexis, and she was like, I've struggled with, do I want to have kids or not? And so I prepared all these questions. And then she comes sauntering into the green room <laughs> with the belly, and I'm just like, oop, <laughs> got to rip out these questions. <laughs> No one told me, but um, but let's take a you know flashback <laughs> before nine months ago. Um, what made you decide to tackle uh, this topic of pregnancy? But we can also throw in the Holocaust in there as well and other societal issues. Um, but what made you tackle this in in a psychological thriller horror kind of a way? Um. Yeah, well, you know, it's an incredibly personal story. And, uh, you know, first off, I, I just want to acknowledge one thing quickly, which is that, uh, you know, um, one of my unions is uh, on strike right now, the WGA. And so, yeah. And so I'm really here tonight to uh, support my incredible cast, uh, Melora Hardin and JLE, and we have a couple other cast members in the audience, Margot Susi and Isabel Du. Can you um, hold up your hands so, so we know where you are? Yay! Oh! Ah. So <laughs> I'm just really happy to be here, you know, uh, among an uh, audience of fellow SAG members um, and, and to be able to share this with my fellow actors um, and, and really continue the very important conversation of, you know, female reproductive rights and body autonomy. Um, and so with that, to answer your question, yes, it's a, it's a very personal story. Um, and I'm just really grateful that the, the cast I had was able to jump in and give me their full trust and support going to those topics, going to those crazy places with me and taking really big swings and supporting me, uh, you know, talking about these topics, uh, in, in a time where, you know, when we started making this movie, Roe was still in place, you know, and then by the time we were finished, it was gone. And so the movie has taken on such a different color um, now, now that it's out in the world. And I'm just really grateful that, you know, this cast trusted me um, to go down that road of these difficult topics together. But doing it in a genre that's uh, more of a horror-ish, if that's how, because some people describe it as psychological thriller, some you know call it horror. But is that is that because a genre like that lends itself to having things being done more extremely, and you can almost satirize the topic by going to the extreme, like you do in this film? Well, you know, like you said, it's something I struggled with for many years, and it was the thing that was keeping me up at night and tormenting me, and, you know, what better place to write horror from, you know? <laughs> and, you know, I think that if this had just been a, a straight drama, you know, I don't know if a movie about female body autonomy would have gotten made, and uh, if you wrap it, you know, if you hide the vegetables, it's like they say in The Princess Bride, you know, chocolate coating makes it go down easier, you know? Um, if you wrap it in entertainment, if you wrap it in, you know, horror or thriller or even comedy, you know, um, people are more likely to sit up and pay attention. So how do you assemble a cast uh, for a film like this? Um, do you cast one person and then build everyone else around that one person? Is it important to get that first person and and what was your process for that and also 
you're an actor yourself, so you could have easily have pulled a Billy Bob Thornton and said, I'm going to star in this as the lead as well. Oh, Lord, that would not, I mean, the, the part of Ella is so enormous. She's in every single scene, um, and I, I just don't think that would have been available to me um, on my first <laughs> feature, but... Um, but I did, I did slip in there for a couple small scenes. Um, Do you guys notice her? Yeah. <laughs> That's great because my own parents didn't recognize me <laughs> in this movie. True story. Um, so yes, we, we started, you know, by casting our Ella and, um, she was of course the critical role in all of this. Um, she is, like I said, in every single scene and we had a very quick process. Uh, the movie was greenlit and two weeks later I was down in Austin prepping. Uh, so I think Diana got the script maybe two or three weeks before we started shooting, which is absolutely insane when you look at the performance that she gave and, um, just the kind of powerful roller coaster she was able to take us all on throughout um, and just be really present for that. And when we were looking at casting, one thing my casting director, um, Brittany Ward, and I were talking about, and we wanted this for all of our actors, we wanted them to feel grounded because the rest of the movie is so wild. And one thing we really wanted was for their voices to feel like really rooted and really grounded. And Diana's voice, as she has one of the most like gorgeous, grounded voices I've ever heard. Um, and you know, it was important for us to cast a Jewish actor in this part. Um, and you know, then the rest of the cast came together around her so beautifully, and I couldn't have asked for for better people. And to the actors, did you all meet each other prior to production or was it meeting each other in Texas? Was there any opportunity to bond? And was that frankly important for a movie like this? Um, no, I, I, uh, we met everyone on set. We didn't get a chance to, because it was such a quick process. Um, I think originally my first scene with Diana was gonna be that kitchen scene. <laughs> <laughs> so it would have been nice to meet you. Uh, Why is that always the case, yeah. right? But luckily there was a conflict schedule somewhere, so we actually had some other scenes, so we got to know each other a bit. I never met Melora. Um, you had no. S you guys had no, no scenes together. No, we had together. no scenes, and um, but you were done. You were I was finished yeah, filming before I, finished I even before. started. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's how. Um, so I met Melora recently in the last. Mm -hmm few weeks but yeah uh, meeting Diana um, and you know she's such a pro it was like when you work with with people with that much experience and talent it's chemistry is very easy mm -hmm. um, and also Alexis had written this amazing script where it was all there so you didn't really have to do much so for me it was a very seamless process for me, um, I just, we met uh, over Zoom <laughs> and um, and Diana came also <laughs> and we sort of met like that and we kind of read through our scenes over Zoom and then I flew to Austin, Texas where we shot this and we did everything. All of my stuff for, I think it was a week, the last week of shooting, we finished everything. It was like a week and a half or something, right? Yes, yeah. and you came in during that last week when everybody was just totally exhausted and, you know, we were, like, locking our last locations and we hadn't slept in three weeks. And, you know, you got there and it was like, Melora Hardin is in the house. Everybody sit up. We're going we're gonna to finish this. And I will also say one of my very favorite things about that, like, one Zoom we had, the Zoom rehearsal we had before we just dove in together. I'm sitting there, you know, with Melora, like, you know, talking about the character. I'm trying to, like, you know, like, get get there with her. And she goes, she goes, yeah, 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 but what color are her nails? <laughs> and I was like, I, I don't know, like, what, what do you think? What are they? And then we, like, had this conversation about the nails. And then once we decided on that, she was like, I got it. I got it. What, was that true, Melora? Yeah, I, I, I <laughs> it's very important to me, yeah. <laughs> well, it was very important to me for this particular character. I, I really am sort of an actress that works on from the outside in. I really, really need to see my character and feel like I look like that person. 
uh, when I played Roxy Hart on Broadway, um, I in Chicago, I would stop before I would go on stage every single night. There's a mirror right off stage, and I would stop and just look at myself, and that was Roxy. And it was like it just it just helped me so much. I, I'm a dancer, so I think I'm like very physical in the way that I sort of connect. Um, so yeah, it was important to me because I, I, I was, I was wondering if Alexis, because we were talking, we talked a little bit about the wardrobe, and I knew it was going to be quite, kind of modern and simple and clean, um, and so, but I really felt like I was really seeing her with red nails, and I wanted Alexis to see her with red nails, and I just didn't know if she was going to, and Alexis was like, oh, let me think about that. <laughs> yes. I said, you can take time, you can think about it. We can get back together tomorrow about this. And she's like, no, I think, you're, I think, it's, I think it's red nails. And you see now, Alexis has started wearing red nails <laughs> since the movie. She, was, she didn't wear red nails before that. It's been a big change for me, but Melora is my, my spirit guide now, yeah. Both of you play doctors, but very different doctors. It, Knowing, yeah, <laughs> different types of doctors. Uh, does the profession of your character f figure a lot into your process? Um, Melinda, maybe more so for you since your character is seen practicing, but uh, Jay, not, not so much for you. There's more of an, uh, we allude to your job and you do wear scrubs, but th we don't really see you in action doctoring. Yeah, I mean, like, we, we, we touch on the, the part that everyone seems to love him, um, and he's a popular guy, and, and uh, so I just wanted to bring that across in the relationship of he's just this loving husband who absolutely adores his wife and would do anything for her and doesn't care if they have babies or not. But, you know, uh, we all find out that, you know, what his real thoughts are on that. But that was, you know... I'd like, to, you know, surgeons sometimes have that kind of god narcissist complex. Um, I don't. I saw him as more of that kind of loving, caring, uh, nurturing type, and I want. And I, that's what I tried to bring across in the relationship with with Diana. You definitely were too good to be true. <laughs> I mean, as we as, as we found out. But when you think of your character, the fact that he knew of this plan doesn't necessarily make him evil or a bad person. He, he, that, he, that could have been done out of love as well. And how do you view him in that way? Do you view him as, did, did you think of him as someone a little bit more sinister or this is just part of his amazing, supportive, loving husband? Well, I, I think <sighs> what men can think is very supportive and loving is very different to what is actually needed by the woman. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, I, the love was real. He, he did adore her and he did want to make her happy, but he did want children as well. So in that typical <laughs> male <laughs> kind of manipulative way, you can kind of go about and do it. Um, just wanted her to come to that conclusion. He wanted her to come to that conclusion. I mean, it's interesting you bring it up. I mean, when me and Alexis were talking about that scene, um, we were talking about, did he know she went to the clinic? And um, Alexis wrote it saying he, he didn't know. And I was like, I think he did know. I think he knew the whole time. I think he, he knew she wasn't on a project. He knew she was at the clinic. He had been talking to Dr. Simmons and it's all working out. And um, so, but the amazing thing is we didn't change a word from the script. We just, Alexis, how she directed the scene and the notes that she gave me, we totally made it work in a way where he knew. He knew the whole time. So Melora, based on his backstory that you two were somehow colluding, did you think you guys were colluding when you were preparing for your character? I mean, I felt like we met at a, at a conference and um, I think that Dr. Simmons is just very laser focused on what she's doing. I think she thinks she's doing really good things for women that have come to her and asked for her help because they desperately want to be normal. And she feels that it's an important job to do that. So I think she's probably 
she meets a lot of men like, you know, Jay's character to say, uh, I have, I have an answer for you. I have something that your wife should try, you know? And he's, you know, so I feel like he, he's one of, he's one of many. And I think probably a lot of those husbands of those women that were there holding their babies that weren't in their arms yeah. and those kinds of things. She probably had met them somewhere or had told someone about them or, yeah. th or the husbands had told the other husbands about them. And yeah. I think that was probably a lot of the way that it went. Because I think this, this film also speaks to that kind of patriarchal idea that a woman who doesn't want children needs fixing, which is a real feminist concept that I thought was really fresh and really a different, unique voice when I read the script and saw Alexis's short, also called Clock. Um, and personally, I think it's such, an, it's such a perfect expression. Uh, that's what horror films are for. It's for people to purge their, their terrors. I think that people that are real fans of horror will tell you that they're going to these films to kind of get rid of their own fears around things. So they, they kind of like purge their nightmares by watching these nightmarish movies. And I feel like it's such a beautiful, to me, creative, artistic choice for Alexis to be purging her own fears through this film that allowed her this beautiful opening for her to have her own child. So it's kind of a beautiful feminist circle all the way around as far as I'm concerned. She was very, your character was very um, nurturing and motherly at the same time intense uh, and very knowledgeable in her field. But there was, I felt like there was just something about her I didn't trust. <laughs> and so when when you play someone who we're, we're supposed to trust, and we do, but there's that one little something, how do you, how do you get all those layers in? Like, what, are you just thinking that she's so in it and she means well, or do you actually play it knowing in the back of her mind that she is, that she also has ulterior motives and isn't quite the motherly, soothing, sweet person? I don't think she has ulterior motives. I think she's totally doing what she believes is right, and I think that any of that sinisterness that you're getting is um, really her truth. I mean, she really does feel like when she says, you're the best kind of person. And when she says, what's that? And she says, a woman. She means a woman. Now, as an actress, I could play that a million different ways. And I know what movie we're making. And I know the tone we're doing. And I know what the, I know what the, you know, the point of that line is. And when I read the script, I, I know what, what needs to happen there, what needs to be. So I think that, sure, I infuse it with things that, I think make it make her more complicated and make her more interesting. But I think really truly her her real instinct is that she's doing the right thing. That's why at the very end in that last scene, when Diana's character comes back and Ella's standing there and she's she's talking to the other women and she's saying, No, this isn't real, it's none of it's real, it's not real. And you know, and and she looks around, did you see Dr. Simmons' face? She's like, What? What do you mean there's side effects? I, I, why didn't you all tell me there were side effects? You know, and it's almost like she, she becomes this kind of character that you say kind of, you have that awe feeling about her because she is very commanding. And I think the women really want to please her. She kind of represents the patriarchy in a matriarchal way. And, um, and so they want, to, they want her to be right. And she is right. You know, and um, and she's determined to be right, and so it's and that's a very masculine, you know, concept anyway. As actors, do you feel that you're as only as good as your scene partner? Is it really a two-hander when you're working together opposite someone, um, or can you still do what you need to do even if the scene partner isn't giving you what you need? No, I don't think you're only as good as your scene partner. You're just better when they're better. <laughs> I'll say that, you know, I had been watching Diana on the monitor for, you know, weeks um, before I jumped in to do my scene with her. And then I got in there and I watched her walk up to me and she just like locked on me. And I 
I had this kind of out of body experience where it was like, oh my God, like that that's a completely different person who I'd been seeing in the monitor anyway, but standing there acting with her was completely different and it blew my mind and it really kind of like threw me for a minute. And I, I mean, she was, I think she was an incredible scene partner in that way. She just... She also is really interesting because like my mom watched it and my mom's 83. Did, did she recognize you? <laughs> she, she, <laughs> <laughs> she did recognize I'm me. So, that's great. Yeah. I'm so happy but for she you. Said to me, yeah. Yeah, she said to me last night, I had them over for dinner last night, my parents, and she said, that was so disturbing. That must have been so difficult to film. And, and she says, was that hard to film? And I was like, no, it was really fun, <laughs> you know, because because Diana is really is really really different. Um, she she really is like she, we were doing that last scene where she comes to the cafeteria and she's like you know bawling and then <laughs> she, Alexis would say cut she'd be like yeah we can, okay so anyway um, yeah like she just is so she's such a bubbly kind of yeah. a person and personality and she's she loves she loves 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 acting. She doesn't have to suffer to to create those moments of real, like, you know, wrenching her guts out. She's doing that on film, but she's not doing that <laughs> between the film, between takes. Yeah. It's really, really wonderful to, to to be around that. I really enjoyed that about her. We had a lot of fun. Jay, what about you as, as having uh, and your scene partner in Diane? I mean, you guys share a lot of intimate scenes, many of different levels of disrobing and not disrobing. So what was that like to have someone? Uh, I mean, it was just like Melora says. I mean, like, y you know, you do, <laughs> you do sometimes work with people who have their process and they stay in it. And for me, quite frankly, it's a pain in the ass because <laughs> especially when you're doing these <laughs> scenes, especially when like they're intimate scenes or quite those intense scenes that like in the kitchen, you do want to call because you're so it's so hyped up it's exhausting mm -hmm. and then to call cut that's your moment where you can gather yourself and like just relax for a minute and then to have someone who's on the same page as you but no as soon as alexis calls action they're right back in it and and diana's like that all the time and that's why she, i mean it just shows like how good she is i mean she's in every scene <laughs> yeah you, you you can't forget that's huge we all had, I don't know, you came in at the end, but like, uh, but we, I, had, I had days off. Uh, and I'm not talking like, you know, she came in for the morning and then had the afternoon. She was in every day, all day. And she never complained once. And not even, not that you'd complain, but there was never a moment where you're like, she's tired. She's fed up. There was never that. She was always full of energy. She was always so great. She was always, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Does this work? She was amazing. She was great. She was like so, so wonderful to work with, and 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 it shows. I mean, this is this performance is outstanding. Like she is on a different level in 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 this movie, and Laura's absolutely outstanding as well. And you know, it, uh, Alex. How's are you? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I d did all right, but like you know, it, it's just it's just testament to yeah. like the people who Alex got in this and how Alex is stuck to her vision, was so clear in her vision, and we knew what we needed to do. Alexis, were there a lot of takes on each scene, or are, are you one of those directors that likes to do like 50 takes before you have what you need, or do you usually, the actors can get it done in one or two takes and you're happy to move on? I, I think it really just depends on, you know, the moment and the shot and, you know, there's so many elements, so many working elements on a set, you know, I mean, you have Melora come in and say that line, you know, what what kind is that? A woman. And she says it perfect the first time. And you're like, great, but the door didn't close. We got to go again, you know? So, and then and then she does it again perfectly and the door closes that time and then you're, you're done. You're out of there, you know? Um, and then, you know, there are other things that, that do require like, you know, more work and getting in there. Um, that, you know, that, that, that kitchen scene, that's one, that was one of my favorite days on set because we, 
had all day to work on that scene and that was a huge privilege it was a quick shoot it was 20 days and so to have one day dedicated to the scene and you know that was a scene that required a lot of coverage and the patience of the actors and it was you know an exhausting scene they go on a roller coaster of emotions uh, and, you know, we were really cutting it up into, you know, like these little bits of, you know, coverage. So we would have this, this, that. And um, gosh, they were just so on the ride with me. And it was such a tiring day for them. But I just remember at the end, like we all felt like, yeah, we, we did. We did that. You know, I think everyone was so tired of seeing my bum. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm not sure just, about that. Just Jen. clap. <laughs> <laughs> just glad, just put some clothes on. It was, it just, it was. Paul Martin, he's a DP here, by the way. He's he did an amazing job. He has seen nearly as much as my girlfriend has seen, and it's, it's. <laughs> I, you're a gentleman. But on that note, I very purposefully wanted to make. A, a movie and especially a horror film which usually you know just has no problem degrading women's bodies um, I wanted to make like a sexy steamy you know movie about the female body without ever showing a single part of it uh, Jay you do a lot of action projects Carnival Row Magnum uh, P.I. and uh, it's Daredevil, yes. Um, and here, you're, you play someone who's definitely not busting down doors and flying through the sky, very much more subdued. Is that something that attracted you to this project, or was it a was it a shift or an adjustment to kind of take a little bit more of a back seat? It was a nice change, yeah, for sure. Um, no, I mean like. Even if it was busting down of doors in this one, I I still would have done it. Like it it was it was just uh, Alexis's amazing script, and for me, it was educational reading it. Like you know when you when you're reading through the the yearly examination scene, and you're reading it, and you're like you're going through it, and you're like oh my god, oh, uh, uh. and then you're like oh my god, women have to do this every year. Like it, it's crazy for like. And and then to have this thing of this 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 clock ticking of, do you want this to happen or not? Which is a life. I mean, I struggle to like m get out of bed each morning and like take take adv advantage of the twenty four hours I have. But like just to have this thing ticking away at you, and people going, yeah, you do. You do want to do that. You do want to do that. It's something. Well, maybe something's up with you. You you, you it will change. And then you're like, whoa, why? Men don't have that pressure, and I can't imagine what it's like. Well, now I do because I, I saw this and I read the script. But like, <laughs> it was it it was yeah. I mean, to answer your question, it was it was lovely to be a part of something like this, and like just I I came away from that movie as a different person. Um, I didn't go and get pregnant, but I got a dog. <laughs> I, I got a dog, so that was, that was, that was close enough. Um, Melora. Like Alexis, you're also a director, and is it uh, hard to resist the urge to want to wear that hat in a film? Um, because Alexis, you had the benefit of putting on your actor hat in this, but Melora, you stuck to the acting. Do you do you always get ideas, and you just have to kind of bite your tongue, or you know when to you just actor for hire? That's all I am. I don't think I'm ever just an actor for hire, just me. That's just not who I am. Like I bring everything to whatever I do. And there are people that are more receptive to everything and people that are less receptive to everything. I think that as I get older, people are more receptive to everything I have to bring. And I, Alexis is, you know, this was her first feature and I was so struck by her clear and very unique vision that showed up distinctly in her short film and in the script. And so there's no possible way I was gonna walk on her set <laughs> and start directing. Um, it was just really beautifully collaborative and um, you know, Alexis 
respects me and I can feel that and I think she could feel that I respect her. And um, so we really had a wonderful sort of meeting of the minds creatively and we got to play together. And that's really what any great work environment is. And, um, and so it was lovely. It was just like, it was so lovely. And I actually was just, I really, as the, the director part of me, I just really enjoyed standing back and watching her work through her days and watching her work through her shots. Um, you know, it's not easy being on a set. It's not easy working through the light changing suddenly and, oh, we had that location shorter than we thought we had it and, oh, that door that we thought was going to be closed it doesn't even close. And, you know, <laughs> like, and why is that sheet hanging there? And what happened to the, the background people that were supposed to be here? How come they're gone? And now there's five of them and there were ten just a minute ago. I mean, <laughs> these kinds of things on a low-budget feature, they're just realities of like everyday dealing and she had a great relationship with Martine she had a great relationship with her AD for her first AD and personally like I just <laughs> will make the analogy I like watching the cogs of the wheel <laughs> um, I like to watch that turn I like to I like to feel that turn and and every every director um, and every set has its own personality and I think I learn a lot just by putting myself in there as one of those, you know, tools that is making that vision come to life. Well, just before we wrap this up, so the film is playing on Hulu exclusively, and it came out on the 28th, which is just last week. What has the response been uh, so far? I mean, haters, lovers, uh, what's happening? I, I have been completely overwhelmed by the response. Um, and honestly, I was bracing myself for a lot of hate. Um, you know, there are a lot of themes and topics in this movie uh, that are, that are gonna piss people off. You know, and uh, you know we have a we have a swinging baby pendulum for God's sake. You know, and there's you know there are Jewish themes. I I didn't know what to expect, but I was I was scared. I was gonna get a lot of. Um, messages of hate directed at me on social media this week. It was just something I was bracing myself for. Instead, I haven't gotten a single one of those. Instead, every single day I have gotten messages from people, complete strangers, saying, thank you so much for making this movie. I feel less alone. I don't feel broken. I feel content with myself. Um, I feel seen. Yeah. And it's, that's been the best part of this. I mean, you know, never mind that, that Twitter's having a blast with it too, which I'm thrilled about. But you know, those messages um, have just made me feel so satisfied and happy that, because um, that was the whole point, is to just make people feel less alone and, and to get this message out that, you know, your body, your choice, your life, your choice. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you all for showing up. If you want to watch it again, it's on Thank Hulu. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all.